Hello and welcome back to another Age of Sigmar painting tutorial. Now in previous videos you guys have asked just how I achieve my silver tower bases and in this video I'll be showing you just how I do it. For this tutorial you will need the following items. First of all you'll need a paintbrush, a hobby knife in which to cut the plastic card out, some PVA glue, some super glue, various grades of sand, I've got a fine here and then a more of a coarse uh, sand just to the right there as well, a biro, several bases of varying sizes, preferably round bases, and also one of the bases should be the one you actually want to mount your miniature on, and also some plaster card as well, which I've got a big sheet of here. Now, it doesn't really matter how thick you go here, it really is personal preference, but just beware, the thicker the card, the harder it is to cut out. So once you've gathered all your materials up, let's begin with the tutorial. First thing we want to do in this tutorial is to draw out the shape of the base, and we do this by taking the base that we want to mount the miniature onto, uh, placing it along the edge of the plaster card like so, and then drawing around with a biro. And there's a reason why we want to use a biro over using a felt tip, and that's because we can press on a little bit more, and it makes cutting out a lot easier. So you can see I'm just getting a rough shape here. It doesn't have to be too precise, as we can cut it out a little bit more. And then once we've got the shape, we want to press on with the biro to get a small indentation, small inline along the edge here. Just pressing on like so. And then once we've done that, we can bring in our knife and start cutting this shape out. So, with plaster card, one of the things you want to do is just to press on lightly at first, just to get the rough line. We don't want to press on too harsh at the moment. Like I said, you only have to need to get a rough circle achieved. You don't need to be too precise at this stage. We're just going to slowly build up these grooves. So I've made one single pass, I'm going to do a few more. Just keep cutting in a little bit deeper each time. So once you've scored in the outline of the circle into the plastic card, you don't actually need to cut all the way through. One uh, good tip about plastic card is all you need to do is make one cut, and I've already done so at this end here, and then the rest of it should just be able to pop out like so. It just follows along with the score that you did like so. And this gives us a circle, which is roughly the same size as our base. You see there's a little bit of an overhang there, which is why you don't need to be uh, worry about being too neat, as we can just cut this off once we've added some designs. Now the next step is to add some crescent moon stylings to the circle that we've got here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a couple of the larger bases. You can even use the same base that you actually use to cut it out. And what you want to do is you want to lay these over the top. And then you can use these to actually get a really nice kind of crescent moon. So if I was to place this over the top like so, and draw around, I'd get a very um, kind of like a shallow dip there. But if I was to use one of the smaller bases, one of the 25 mil bases, you get a much larger moon like so. It really depends on what you want to go for. So I'm going to go for about a mid-range one here, so probably just going to take the 32mm base there. Uh, once again, draw around with my biro here, scoring it in as I go along. Just go over this again. And this is section here is uh, what we're actually going to be applying to the base. This section will just be cut off and removed. So once again we bring in the knife and we start scoring along the line. So here we have the cutout shape, and I just did the same way as before. I scoured a line and then cracked off uh, the excess. And if I just bring in my 32 millimeter base here, you can see when I line it up, it creates this nice crescent moon effect. So the next step is to glue this plastic card down to the base. Just bring in some super glue for this, as it uh, fixes it a lot, e a lot more firmly than plastic glue. Just apply some up there, and then firmly press it down onto the base. Just keep your fingers out the way is you don't want to glue your fingers to the base. You see I'm just holding it down and waiting for the glue to set. Once the glue is dry the plastic card should be firmly attached to the base like so and you can see we've got a small overhang there. Now I'm going to be removing this with a hobby knife but if you have um, some hobby files you could use those instead. I'm just going to be cutting along the rim of the base like so and just creates a much more smooth edge going along like so. So once you've completed the trimming of the edge there, you should have a nice uh, smooth edge going around the base. The next step is to start adding some sand to these um, depressed sections there. So I've got my uh, PVA glue here. I'm going to put a small, a couple of small dots, like just like so. Once you've done that, you can bring in a paintbrush and just spread the glue out across the area. If you want, you can even overlap the two and just add a small amount of glue just onto the surface. It looks like sand's piled up on top of, of the platform. 
and then just remove the excess ring around the edge with a finger. Then you want to bring in your different grades of sand. First of all, I'm going to start off with the coarser sand and just sprinkle a few small rocks onto the surface like so. Then I'll be bringing in the finer sand and just sprinkling this across the rest of the area. And this creates some nice variance in the sand on the base. And all you need to do then is just leave this to dry. So once the glue is dried, you will need to prime your base, and this is one that I've uh, already primed earlier. And uh, I've used a grey spray primer for this, as uh, it's just my preference. You could use any colour really, it doesn't really matter. Now the first step is to paint the sand on here, and for this we'll be using Calador Sky. Now mixing in a small amount of water into the Calador Sky should improve the flow slightly, now you allow you to cover this area. You can be quite liberal in the application, making sure that it gets into all of the nooks and crannies along the edges here and also in between all of the individual stones. Now at the moment the Calador Sky base is looking a little bit too bright so I want to darken this and also get some shading in between all the individual grains of sand on there. So for this we'll be using a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade. As before we can be quite liberal with the application of the wash across the sand here, making sure that it gets into all of these individual gaps between the sand. You just might see it there, pulling into the recesses, darkening the overall colour of the sand. Once the wash has dried, the next step is to start dry brushing over the sand. This will be using Teclas Blue. Now, if you're unfamiliar of what dry brushing is, it's essentially a way of getting uh, paint onto the raised surfaces of an area. Now, what I've done is I've got a small amount of paint on this brush. I've removed a lot of it onto a piece of paper. You just about see hardly anything on there. So we're going to be dragging this across the surface of the sand, you can see it's picking out all of the raised sections like so, and I'll be doing this on the other side as well, making sure they get all of these sections picked out. Now the final step in painting the sand is to perform a second dry brush of Blue Horror. Once again I just have a small amount of Blue Horror on my brush here and I'm just going to be dragging this over mainly the larger rocks on the sand, you can see, and then it just picks them out and adds a little bit more variation to the sand roll than it being all just one flat colour. With the sand painted, the next step is to paint the plastic hard areas, and I'll be painting these the same way as I've tackled the gold on my other Silvertown miniatures, by first of all base coating them with Retributor Armour. As Retributor Armour is a base paint, you should have no problem covering over this grey primer. You see here, I'm just, I've mixed in a small amount of water here, just want to improve the flow slightly. And then once this is covered, I'll be applying a second layer over the top. Once the base coat has dried, I'll now be applying a wash of Seraphim Sepia over the top of the gold. By applying this wash, we not only dull down the overall brightness of the gold, but we also add a little bit of variation into the shading as well. As you can see, it slightly pulls around the edges. I just want to apply this, gold, this um, Seraphim Sepia wash across the entirety of the gold areas. Now the final step in painting the gold is to apply a small highlight along the edges here of Runefang Steel. So I'll be applying this highlight in very much the same way as I highlight my silver tail miniatures, just dragging the brush along the edges here. This just creates the illusion of light reflecting off the surface. And here we have a few examples of my miniatures using the bases. As you can see, I've got a nice variation of different shapes, and this can be achieved by just playing around with the different bases. Generally speaking, using crescents and fluid shapes works really well for these zinch bases. One of the things you may also have noticed is that I've painted the edge of the base. I've used a bad and black for this, however you can use whatever paint you want, and this really is down to personal preference. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, do let me know in the comments below, and also check out my previous Silver Tower painting tutorials if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future videos. So until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.